Welcome, viewers, to Buelna News. This is your host, Gabriel Buelna. It's um, we're we're gonna we're gonna be talking about a tough topic today, but we have one of our uh, of, of our greatest leaders here with us today. We have Father Greg Boyle, who I'm gonna give a quick little introduction. But before that, um, if you're new to Buelna News, press the like button uh, down down there. Um, we greatly appreciate it. Um, and watch all of our, our other videos. And uh, if you need to reach me on my other thing, go down my link to Buena Laws right there. But let's get into it. Today we have Father Greg Boyle. Father Greg Boyle is a, a Jesuit priest, uh, grew up in, in here in, in, in Los Angeles, um, was the parish priest at Dolores Mission, um, helped found Proyecto Pastoral at Dolores Mission, um, was uh, a, the founder of Homeboy Industry. Um, I've known uh, just a, a, a bit of, um, make sure everyone knows here, um, Father Boyle and I have known each other for a very long, long time. Uh, we've been friends, we've worked together uh, in different agencies. Um, he baptized my three daughters, but Father Boyle, I wanted, uh, we're, we're gonna be talking about Healing LA and, and, and some of the issues that have occurred um, in the last uh, week and a half with regard to the release tapes. And Father Boyle, while a Catholic priest and a Jesuit priest in particular, has also transcended and, and has talked about, about healing in our different communities. When Father Boyle first started, um, or at least working in terms of homeboy industry, he worked mostly in, in, in the community of Boyle Heights, uh, majority uh, Chicano neighborhood, Mexican, Central American, um, a lot of uh, parents speaking in Spanish. Um, and homeboy industries, you know, has 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 kind of transcended, has moved on into serving diverse communities. So, in the last week, uh, uh, Father Boyle, um, first again, welcome. Um, where are you at right now? I'm in Buffalo on my way to New York City. I spoke uh, with two homies in Canisius uh, College last night. Okay, so you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so the insults, the insults and comments in the release tape were uh, videos um, cross many boundaries. Um, have you heard some of the tapes or have you seen some of the news stories, Father Boyle? Oh, yeah, absolutely. OK, you know, from anti-blackness, anti-indigenous, anti-LGBT, the each each insult that was made in the videos has a unique history in U.S. and the region. When you take each comment, I've heard the following words because I've had conversations with members, individuals from the different communities. And they hear some of the words and I just wanted to put them out there that folks come up with. They, they, they say the videos bring them sadness, disappointment, betrayal, trust. Some feel that they have a hole in their heart. Um, some have said that they look at their neighbors and, 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 and current politicians differently after the tapes, right? People are asking, you know, who is having these conversations who are not got, you know, caught on tape? Um, you know, we're, and, and one person mentioned that kind of have like a macro unfaithfulness. Um, and, you know, so as we move it, move through that and we kind of, you know, from macro unfaithfulness into macro healing, what does healing look like? And, and if you have anything to say before you answer, what does healing look like? Yeah, I, 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 the question I ask myself always is, when do we make progress? And we make progress, historically, always, whenever we name things correctly. So we settle for pointing things out. We should hold out for pointing the way. We settle for moral outrage, and we should hold out for moral compass. These things are quite different from each other. So I'll step away from that controversy and just say, you know, Kanye West sends these alarming anti-Semitic tweets. No question, they're anti-Semitic, which describes his tweets. And people can shake their fist and point it out and, and have moral outrage. To which I would say, you do know he's mentally ill. That doesn't disparage him at all. My God, I have so much compassion for people who are mentally ill. He did not choose this mental illness. It chose him. So if we point it out, anti-Semitic, yeah, and we settle for that because our moral outrage is self-congratulatory, we should hold out for moral 
compass that says he belongs to us. He's unshakably good and he's mentally ill. That doesn't touch his goodness. Then I look at the four council members who are all friends and everybody's on a continuum of health, some less healthy and some more healthy. Some members of council in that meeting giving the most alarming uh, statements, and some are silent or just moderately alarming. It's a continuum of health. Is this about hate? No, this is about health. So none of us are well until all of us are well. And the reason we don't make progress is because we don't move from moral outrage to moral compass. We don't move from pointing things out to pointing the way. There are two truths on which I base my life. Everybody's unshakably good and we belong to each other. Then you roll up your sleeves and you say, it's absolutely appropriate for people to resign. Absolutely appropriate. You know, you know, it's absolutely appropriate to remove Kanye West from, from his Twitter feed or what, whatever the language is on that. And yet, we need to be clear as a community. This isn't about, I, I'm not interested in demonizing anybody. This is why we don't make progress. We think it's about hate and it's about health. And nobody viewing this right now has ever met, ever, a healthy, whole, well human being who was a racist, who was an anti-Semite, who was a homophobe, a xenophobe, a misogynist. It's about health. And none of us are well until all of us are well. So how do we love each other into wholeness and walk each other home to a place of wellness and where nobody is a stranger to themselves? That's my take. And I think it's why we don't make progress because we settle for self-congratulatory uh, protest and denunciation. And I'm not interested because I know it doesn't move us. It doesn't move us to healing. We get stuck because we want it to be about me. I denounce, I, you know, I'm in favor of love and not hate. It's self-congratulatory. And it's why we don't make progress. So I'm interested in progress. I don't demonize these uh, city council people. Of course, they should all resign. Of course, this is obvious. And we need to move, he- move ahead. But, but we're, we're, we're so intent on addressing issues head on, and we're never very interested in getting underneath. So racist may describe this, but it doesn't explain this. Health explains this. And that's where I, and, and gang members have taught me that for 40 years. I've never met an evil person. I've never met a bad person ever, not once. And I know more gang members than any human being on the planet. You'd think maybe I met one. I've never met one. I've met despondent people. I've met traumatized people. I've met people who aren't well, but I've never met a bad person. So my hope is that one day we'll make progress by naming things correctly. Um, the final question, because we wanted to make this interview short because we want folks to, to listen to your words and, and, and then uh, discern them on, on their own. If your if you're community, an individual in the community, if you're a family with children and youth, and if you're also Kevin De Leon and Gil Cedillo and Nuri Martinez and Rodin Herrera, what would you, what would you tell them? Well, as I said, you know, I, I just think, uh, you know, that there's no way that resigning is, I mean, everybody has to resign. It's just one of those things. We can't move forward until that happens. That seems so clear to me and not even a controversial thing. But I would want the community to know that, that the root of, of healing is really based in finding the thorn underneath, which is what the homies always say. Find, what's this about? Rather than get toppled by behavior that's bad, what language is it speaking? What's it telling us? knowing that everybody's unshakably good and we belong to each other. Now, what language is this speaking? How can we help each other to 
find their true selves in loving. That's the only thing I care about. So, and maybe I'm asking something that's a little unfair. What are some things that individuals can do in community to help to lead on that path as individuals and community? Well, if you believe there are good people and bad people, I'm not sure there's much hope to make progress. And if you think that there's an us and a them, we're not going to get to a community of kinship, a community of beloved belonging, which is the goal. What's the point of healing if it doesn't lead to a community of beloved belonging? So there are certain things you have to discard. The notion that there are some people who aren't, who don't belong to us and shouldn't be included and should be ostracized. Or there are some people who are just plain old bad, which is a very unsophisticated and always untruthful uh, contention. So uh, that's that's what I would advise. Um, and uh, that's my hope. Father Boyle, um, this was a short interview, but I wanted to get your, your, your take. And viewers, uh, put some comments down. You know, we want to hear from you. Um, as part of our, 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 our goal here, we want to have a conversation um, and hear voices. Um, you know, our thought is that, that, that if you're able to, to express those voices, then at least there's communication that, that's occurring. So again, follow us below. Um, this is your host, Gabriel Buelna. Thank you very much. And to the next interview, Father Boyle, thank you very much. And be safe and 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 um, in your mission out in Buffalo and out in New York City. Thank you very much. Thank you.